All right, so uh, today what we're going to do is a little bit um, of jumping uh, forward into some command-based programming. So um, over the last couple of programming sessions, we learned um, an overview of VS Code, the environment that we work in. We did some browser-based introduction to Java. And then the last class that we did, we actually did a timed-based robot. Um, and I've still got that open here, so I can just as a real quick reminder, um, with that one we have a main.java and a robot.java, and all of the code that we created went in this robot.java. Um, for our example that we did, everything even went in the teleop periodic. Um, so this is great. We can do you know most of what we have to do uh, if we go this way. Um, once our robots start getting complex, uh, this one robot.java file starts getting quite large. And when you have a, a team of people and programmers all trying to work on the same thing, um, all in the same file, that can get very tricky um, and difficult to manage uh, from a logistic standpoint. So I want to introduce what command-based programming is. Um, I uh, hope that after uh, today's class, you would maybe be able to open up some code that we've done in the past and feel like you could navigate around the files and have an idea about what was going on. Um, it would still be very difficult, I think, to make something from scratch, uh, but um, hopefully this gets you one step closer and um, feeling comfortable looking at the stuff that we do. So first off, I want to talk about what is command-based programming. Uh, so the time-based, everything goes in that one teleop periodic. Um, command base is a little bit different. You set up your code and you define subsystems and then you define commands that utilize those subsystems. Um, and so, uh, a, I'm sorry. Ooh. One command may use multiple subsystems. Um, and uh, there are typically several commands um, available for a subsystem to use. So, for instance, if we look at uh, their little blobs here, if we zoom in, um, you might see that we've got drivetrain uh, as a subsystem and then move to scoring position and drive forward and score and drive to go goal. So all three of these commands probably involve the drivetrain. You might also notice that the drive forward and score command, it would probably use both the drivetrain and maybe the ball shooter or, or maybe the elevator or arm or something too. So as I mentioned, one command might use multiple subsystems and there are typically multiple commands available that a subsystem may use. Um, just to back up for a moment here, um, if you want to uh, be able to uh, learn some of this coding stuff on your own, um, you can go to docs.wpilib.org. So if I just type in docs.wpilib.org, you'll see that it brings me to this page. There's a bunch of information in here. Um, much of it is going to be uh, very advanced, but there are some good introduction stuff in here as well. Um, you know, they've got their zero to robot. Um, the programming your robot should kind of get you up to speed from where we were before. Um, and then they've got some things about programming basics. So if you want to learn a little bit more about the things you can do with motors, you can click on this actuators and then using motors, controllers, and code. And they've got documentation on, on this uh, here as well. Um, so there's a lot of information available in here. Um, something else that might be relevant that I'll talk more about later is that there's this Java API docs. Um, so when we look at some code later and we make a motor controller, um, you'll notice, or you might have some questions of like, oh, how did I know that I could use the um, uh, set method or a get method or anything like that? So if we look at what an object is uh, that we uh, type in, so we our motor controllers we're using in the simulation are the Victor X Victor SPs. So if we type Victor SP in that search bar. It brings up that class, and then it brings up um, what all the different methods are, and then some uh, details about them. So, like, I can click on this git, and it lets me know what that git method does, um, and then you know it has all the other ones as well. So, I'll come back to that a little bit later. I just wanted y'all to know that you can get to it from this docs page. Uh, there's the WPI lib Java API docs. Um, that might be if you want to go off and learn some things on your own. So. Uh, the first thing that you're going to do 
is you're going to go to github.com slash paradox slash command training, which that link should be in our YouTube description video. And you're going to click code and download zip. And so that uh, file is going to download. And then when that's done, you should be able to go to that folder, extract it. Um, and then uh, you'll have your command training folder. And that's going to have all the code that we're going to use today. So just to make sure, I'll even open up a file new window. And file open folder. I'm going to go to the command training folder. I'm going to go in until I see the dot VS code dot WPI lib Gradle SRC and vendor derps and select. And we've got our code. So I'm going to uh, make sure that this, uh, yeah, it's building right now. When this finishes building, we'll know that we're all set and good. Build successful in 12 seconds. All right. So um, you might notice that uh, there's already a lot more going on. Before, in our timed robot example, we just had main.java and robot.java. Now we have this constants.java and robot container.java, and we have these additional folders of subsystems and commands. So I'm going to look at just the subsystems first. You can see I've got a drivetrain subsystem and a spinner subsystem, and so we'll talk about those in a moment. And then I've got these commands. I've got a drive with joysticks, a spin faster, spin slower, and a spin stop command. You'll notice this is yellow. This yellow just means that there are some warnings in this. It's because I have some things that aren't being used. If you want to, you are welcome to uh, take those lines and delete it if it bothers you to have those warnings. Um, and so you'll see that that goes away. So a yellow uh, on the file means that you have some warnings. A red means that you have an error. So for instance, if I misspelled something in here, it turns red. Okay. So let's walk through um, what happens in here. So we don't need to worry about main.java. Robot.java is going to look very similar to what it was before in that it has a robot init, it has a robot periodic, a disabled init, disabled periodic, autonomous init, autonomous periodic, teleop init, teleop periodic, etc. Um, but you'll notice that one of the differences is that in the robot init, it now creates uh, a robot container. So whenever you have this new, this means that it's a, a class or an object. Um, if you're in VS Code, you can hold the control key and then click on it, and it takes you to that file or that command where it's defined, um, or that line where it's defined. So the robot container.java file is the new one. Um, and so we're going to be... The, the robot container is intended to define all your drivetrains and uh, I'm sorry, define all your subsystems and map your commands to buttons on your joystick. Um, in this case, we're still going to be using our keyboard as our joystick for the simulation. Um, and uh, I've got code already here that defines some new subsystems. One of the things that I'm going to do is walk you through creating a new subsystem and creating a new command for it. And then I'm going to challenge you to make your own commands or your own subsystem and tie things in together. So let's walk through what is going on in this robot container uh, file. So in robot container, um, we declare um, our subsystems and our joystick. Um, you can generally just copy the, the blue text that you see for something um, when you're adding new things. Uh, I will give a little bit of information here that public versus private just means can you reference this object from another file. Um, so I've gone ahead and made the joystick a public. Um, all of these could be public, all of them could be private, but you'd have to change something in our drivetrain file if you wanted to make this private. So we can talk about that in a little bit. Um, so a public static final, that is just describing some things about our variable. Um, the joystick is the type of variable that it is. Um, and so that could be something like a double or a integer or a string. In this case, the type of variable that it is is, called a, is an object called a joystick. M underscore joystick is our variable name. And then we have to uh, create a new instance of that. Uh, thing. So this is that constructor class that we talked about in our uh, browser-based introduction to Java. 
And this zero in this case just means that it's the first joystick that's plugged in. Um, spinner and drivetrain are now classes that we've created, up in, or uh, new classes that we're creating. These are the new subsystems. Up until now, um, any of these things are something that already exists in code that we are importing. Um, but now we will be creating these subsystems. And so we'll walk through that in just a minute. But um, at the important part to note here is that if we wanted to refer to our own subsystem spinner, it is referred to as M underscore spinner and M underscore drive is our new drivetrain subsystem. In our robot container, um, there's a couple of different things, and I, I don't know a great way to go about uh, how to make this all make sense uh, because there's a lot of things that are kind of happening simultaneously. Um, and so know that as I define some of this, it, it may not seem linear um, as I'm going through it. And hopefully if you watch this a couple of times or rewind, um, it'll all make sense. So um, one of the things that we want to do is we want to make sure that our subsystems have default commands. That basically means that uh, what is the subsystem doing if there's no other um, input that is making it do some other command? Um, most of the time, the default command is just that nothing is happening. Um, for our drivetrain, typically we just want it to be listening to what the joysticks um, inputs are, and if the joystick positions are anything other than centered, we want it to drive around while we're in teleop mode. Um, so this M drive is our subsystem. We're setting the default command, and we are saying new drive with joysticks. This drive with joysticks is a command that we wrote. Um, so uh, that is in the files up here. And then we've got some parameters that are being passed to it. Again, this is a lot of information to absorb all at once. I don't expect it to make perfect sense right now, but hopefully enough that you can modify things, copy and paste, and, and make a new one if you wanted to. And eventually, it'll start to make a little bit more sense. Um, and then uh, this is just making it so that some things get sent to our uh, simulation. You don't need to worry about it right now. And then this configure button bindings is a method that is below here. And this is basically making it so that when a button is hit, um, the code goes off and executes a command. And so you can see that all I've created down here are I've created two buttons that when a button is held, it makes the spinner or it calls the commands for either to make the spinner either go slower or faster. So that's all of the robot container. The robot container, the only things that it does is it defines the new subsystems and it uh, defines what buttons make which commands happen. Um, so uh, if you want to take a pause and kind of look at this file, now would be a good time to do it. Um, but we might want to come back here after we go through the subsystems and commands as well. <coughs> so. Uh, in the subsystems folder, you might have to hit this arrow here to expand it. You'll see drivetrain.java. You could also get to it, um, like I mentioned before, if you hover over where it says drivetrain, you can hit the control button. And when you see it highlight like that with an underline, you can click it and it takes you to that file. Or you can just open up this file directly. So our drivetrain subsystem, um, you can see that the class is set up a little bit differently. If we look at the robot container, it just says public class robot container. Um, the drivetrain, you can see that it says extends subsystems base. Um, you don't need to understand what that means. Just know that it is important for right now. Um, when you start making things, you'll want to make sure that you've selected the right thing. If you start getting errors, this may be a thing to look at and make sure that it says the right thing here. Um, all we've done here is we've defined our motors, uh, something called differential drive. This is the same thing that we use in our timed robot example from last week. And then uh, throttle and twist. Uh, we could get away with this or not having this, but I created it to make it hopefully look a little bit uh, clearer later. Um, so uh, this is our constructor. So whenever, when we are in robot container and this uh, we're telling it to make a new instance of this drivetrain. That is when it comes and executes these three lines. It says the left motor is a new Victor SP, right motor is a new Victor SP, and then the drive is a new differential drive that uses the left motor and the right motor. You'll also notice that I've got in here this constants.left drive motor and constants.right drive motor. 
Um, constants is a file here, and it can be useful to make sure that you don't accidentally say that the same motor is used in three different or for three different things. So, um, say for instance that we are in our drivetrain file, and we said Victor SP zero and Victor SP one. That is telling uh, the computer which motor controllers to use. And I would hate for us to go into the spinner and then accidentally reuse one or reuse zero. So using the constants file is a good uh, way to uh, make sure that you don't accidentally um, use the same thing in multiple places um, by hard coding and a value somewhere. And by hard coding, I mean using a number explicitly right in here. Uh, <clears throat> we don't need to do anything in the periodic function here, but what we are going to do is make a new method called arcade drive. And so in our method for arcade drive, um, very similar to what we did in our timed robot example, we say throttle. And then what we're doing here, it, this is why the joystick had to be a public um, object. Uh, so uh, in order to get the raw access zero and one of the joystick, um, when we are in the drivetrain.java file, we have to access it from the robot container file. Um, if you imagine that each or each one of these things is an object, the robot container is an object, the drivetrain is an object, and the drivetrain is trying to get information about the robot container object. So if this joystick is not public, um, then the drivetrain isn't allowed to look at it. Um, and get any information from it. So we are assigning um, the raw axis 0 to the throttle and the raw axis 1 to the twist. And then we just call an arcade drive here. And um, so even though there, I, I just want to note, having this method doesn't mean that anything is happening. It just now makes it so that if we call that method later, this is what happens. It goes and gets the joystick uh, raw access zero for the throttle and one for the twist and then um, calls the arcade drive method to make the robot drive. Um, <clears throat> and if we look at the command, uh, let's go back to robot container real quick. You'll see that our, uh, our drivetrain subsystem has a default command of drive with joysticks. So we can look at what this command does and you'll see that um, in the execute area here, um, we are just calling the arca arcade drive function. So let's look at this command for a little bit. You'll see, um, like I mentioned with the subsystem, uh, instead of just being public class drive with joysticks, it is now extending something. In this case, it is extending a command base. And so again, we define some variables up here. We have our drivetrain, um, throttle, and twist. Um, and then when this command is called, these uh, variables here, the drive, param, throttle, and param, twist, they're only going to be around at, at this point. If we try to reference param, throttle down here and initialize or execute, it no longer exists. It only exists while this is happening. So that is why we created these variables uh, that are above the constructor for the command. Um, so that uh, we can hold those values for as long as we want and use them later. So we assign drive to M drive, we assign param throttle to throttle, param twist to twist, and then this add requirement says that this command requires one subsystem and that subsystem is the M drive. Initialize is something that will be called once. Um, execute is something that gets called every 20 milliseconds, just like the teleop periodic. And then uh, there's a couple of other methods here that are checking to see um, if anything should be continued or not. So um, this is finished. In this case, we are always returning false. And so this command is going to keep running forever. If we wanted to, we could put some if logic so that um, you know if something happens that we say, OK, now we don't want the drivetrain to uh, be driven by the joysticks anymore, we would return uh, true, and so you could put some if logic and return either true or false. But for the case of a drivetrain, we always want it to be driving by the joysticks, so we're just always going to say that it is not finished. Um, and so uh, I guess I'll talk a little bit more about this command setup if we go back um, over here to our what is command based programming. Um, basically, what happens when one of these commands is called. Um, it gets scheduled by 
the program. And we could one day do a deep dive into the program to understand how it does that. Um, we don't really need to worry about it right now. Um, all we need to worry about is that um, if something is set up as a default command, it will always be running, or we can bind something to a joystick button, and when that button gets pushed, it goes through and it does the initialize, or whatever's in the initialize function, and then it calls that execute uh, function every 20 milliseconds, and um, until the is finished returns true. Um, and so you can have multiple commands all running at the same time, as long as they don't require the same subsystem. Um, so uh, that is all just for the um, drivetrain. So you might be thinking to yourself, wow, this is a lot more complicated than the timed robot. And it is. Um, it, it absolutely is. Uh, we have now several more files just to have the robot drive. Um, but as I mentioned, uh, this allows us to have multiple people working on the robot. And it allows us to do a little bit uh, better control of things with the robot um, in our sim simple examples, it might not make sense, um, but once we get into more complicated examples, uh, you'll see where it is that the command base uh, can really shine for what it is that we tend to do. Um, so I'm going to quickly uh, just do a simulation just to show that the drivetrain is working. I'll, I clicked on the WPI lib command palette, simulate robot code, and we'll click the HAL SIM GUI. And just like before, we're going to go to our network tables live window. We're going to uh, bring up the drivetrain. Um, and actually, uh, what we want is the ungrouped differential drive. Um, so you can see that uh, the command that is default is the drive with joysticks. If I hit teleoperated and I bring our keyboard zero to be joystick zero, when I hit A on the keyboard, it drives backwards. D makes it drive forward. W would make it rotate one way. S makes it rotate the other way. And I can hit both uh, A and W and we can see that it would be trying to drive backwards and rotate around. Um, so uh, that is uh, a very quick overview there. Let's go back to our code and let's talk about um, a couple of other things. So um, we've talked about the drivetrain subsystem. Actually, go ahead and pause and look over the drivetrain subsystem and the drive with joysticks command if you need to. Um, see if you can kind of make sense about what's going on there. Okay, so now let's look at the spinner uh, subsystem. You'll see that again, this the spinner extends the subsystem base. This is just a made up um, uh, subsystem. Uh, it could be used for whatever it is that you want to imagine that is being used for. Again, this is just an example. Um, and so I just called it spinner because I'm imagining that it is spinning a wheel. And um, maybe it's always going to be spinning the wheel and we want to be able to control make it spin a little bit faster, but keep spinning, or make it start to slow down, um, but still keep spinning at a, a slower speed. So um, we define our Victor SP, uh, M spin. And so now M spin is our motor that is being used. Uh, just like before, I use the constants.spinner motor, and I set the default command to be the spin stop. So if for some reason one of the other commands um, finishes, um, it will default to be the stop command. Um, this is a keyword and basically it's just referring to this object. And so uh, we are passing the spin stop command, the spinner object, uh, the sp subsystem. So if, if you want to imagine it, what it is trying to do is say that the spin stop command, we're passing it the spinner subsystem. Um, you can't do that in a, a cleaner way because you're actually in the subsystem file here. So that's why you use the this keyword. Um, in the periodic function, what I did here is I set the uh, motor speed to a variable called current speed. So this private double is def uh, initialized to zero. And then when we hit spin faster, 
um, current speed takes, uh, uh, all we're doing is increasing current speed by 0 0.01, but we want it to um, uh, not be any larger than 1.0. So we are taking the minimum value between 1.0 and whatever this value is. Um, and then current speed uh, for spin slower, we're decreasing it by minus 0.1. But again, we don't want it to go any lower than minus 1. If we wanted to, we could uh, write this out uh, much more verbose and say um, current speed equals current speed plus 0 0.1. And then if current speed is greater than 1.0, we'll say current speed speed equals 1.0. So uh, this line is the same as this line, or these lines up here. Um, it's just a little bit shorter. I'll leave that there um, in my example file here, um, just so you can pause and take a look at it and make sense of what's going on. Um, and then the spin stop sets the motor to zero. Um, in our spin slower, actually it's the spin faster command, again, it extends the command base. You'll see that again, we have this uh, spinner subsystem param spin um, is the, the name of it. And we assign it to the subsystem spinner here so that we can use it later on. Um, we say the add requirements, We this command requires the spinner subsystem and then we don't need to do anything in initialize and in execute. Every time we come through, we're going to make it uh, go a little bit faster. Um, and so again, this gets called every 20 milliseconds while the command is being run. Um, and we don't need it to ever finish. And if we go in slower, you'll see that I did it slightly differently. It's almost exactly the same, except I put spin slower in the initialize rather than the execute. So now when we do this, um, the spin slower uh, method only gets called once because it only gets called in the initialize versus the spin faster gets called in the execute, which gets called every time the scheduler runs while the command is scheduled. Um, and then the spin stop is the same thing. Um, we just put the spin stop in the initialize. Um, and so let's see what happens in our simulator here. Oh, I'm sorry. I need to go back to the robot container to point out that um, we can let this run in the background real quick. You'll, you can see that I mapped slower to joystick button one and faster to joystick button two. And what I have here is that while the button is held, we're going to go slower. And while uh, joystick button two is held, we're going to spin it faster. All right, so I'm going to come here and the robot is currently disabled, so nothing will happen. If I hit the Z key on my uh, keyboard, that is button uh, one. Yeah, so uh, button one is Z, and so that's going to make the, uh, the wheel go slower. And then two is going to increase it, so that's X. So Z and X are my two buttons that I'll be using here. And let's pull up our spinner. Um, so we can see that that is what command is being run. And let's see, where do I, if I expand this, um, the smart dashboard, this is the value of what the motor is. So if we go look at our spinner.java, you can see that in periodic, I'm putting to the smart dashboard a number and we're getting the value from the motor. So if I go into teleoperated and I hit, I'm going to hold down the Z button. You'll see that while I'm holding it down, the current command changes to spin slower. The default command is still spin stop. And my spinner is only negative uh, 0.1. And then if I release it, now we can see that the cur current command is spin stop again. And if I press it again, it decreases it. And you can see that I'm still holding it down because that button is yellow. And every time I push it, basically it goes down one more. And then when I get to minus 0.1, uh, I'm sorry, minus one, it no longer goes down any anymore. Now, what happens when I hit X? Um, as I mentioned, spin slower was in the initialize function where it called the method uh, to uh, decrement the speed. 
Um, but in spin faster command, I put in the execute command, which gets called every time. So as long as I'm running that method, we're going to see this value go up. So I'm going to hold down the X key and you can see that it very quickly changed to 1.0 because it uh, gets called every time that it goes through. So if I decrement it a little bit, I'll go back to zero and um, every, or I'll even go back all the way to minus 0.1. All right. And I'm just going to tap X and you can see it's gotten back to zero and I tap it again, it's at 0.6, tap it again, it goes to one because it increments so quickly. Now, I'm going to ask another question. Why is it that when we are at spin stop, the spinner speed is still going? That doesn't make a whole lot of sense, right? Well, the reason why that is happening is because our subsystem, uh, the set speed is, or the, the current speed is a variable here that's holding the value. And then in periodic, we're setting the motor to that speed. And so if we comment this line out, or actually if we just, uh, I'm going to cut it and I'll put it in the spin slower functions, uh, spins faster and spin slower methods here. And let's restart it. And go into teleoperated. You'll see that when I hit Z, it's minus 0.1. And then when I let go, now it goes back to zero because it stopped. And so every time I hit it, it's going uh, to a different value. And same thing now with X. I can hold it and it's at one, but as soon as I let go, it stops it. Uh, all right. So um, depending on what it is that you want it to do, uh, you may want to change how this is uh, functioning. But I wanted to point out how this periodic function is going to be called, you know, every every time once per the scheduler run. So again, every 20 milliseconds. And the way that we had it here with uh, setting the motor to the current speed, um, stop didn't change the current speed. So even though we are calling the spin stop function and it's going to zero, it's not actually, it wasn't actually turning the motor off. So, um, little things to watch out for. Let's go ahead and go back into here. I don't know, actually, I'm curious if I add a plot. Let's, let's add a plot and see what happens. If uh, we can see it going back and forth between. So you can see it decrementing, and then whenever I touch uh, X, it goes up very quickly uh, just because of the way that it's working. So um, yeah, so how do you add a new subsystem and how do you add a new command? Um, so go ahead and pause, look through the code. You can definitely mess with some of the code that you've got here um, and, and see if it makes sense to you or if not, Definitely show up to office hours. I can talk more about it. Um, or maybe just learn that I tried to do too much all at once here. And that would be okay to, to learn that too. Um, I want to make sure that things are making sense and not intimidating to you. Um, so if you wanted to create a new subsystem, what you're going to do is you're going to hover over the subsystems. You're going to right click and you're going to come down to where it says create a new class slash command. So that is... Um, going to bring up this up here and you're going to say pick a command and we want to create a command type it in uh, you're going to select the new option here and then a name for the class so we're just going to name it arm uh, this will be a uh, uh, I'm sorry I did it as a wrong thing I don't well let's go ahead and I'll finish doing it with the wrong thing to point out how we would know that we did it wrong all right so I'm in the subsystem now and arm.java and I look at it and I see, oh no, this is a command. It's not a subsystem. Um, so things aren't going to work right. Like what's up with this initialize, execute, and end? I don't need that in a subsystem. So we would just go right click and delete it and move it to the recycle bin. All right, so let's try this again. Create a new class slash command. We're going to make subsystem new arm. And here we go. So now you can see the arm extends subsystem base. All right, so what we need to do is we're going to create a victor sp. Um, so victor sp 
um, arm motor. And in our constructor here, we're going to say uh, arm motor equals new Victor SP. And we need to create a number for it. We can put a number in here. But again, if I put in zero, this isn't going to be happy because the uh, drivetrain is already there. We also, oh, uh, when you're typing in a new object, uh, you need to import some things. An easy way to do that is hover over it. If you see the quick fix, it'll tell you sometimes what some options are for how to fix the red squiggly line errors. Um, we just need to import Victor SP. It does that. Um, and those red squigglies go away. Um, but it's still not going to work because this zero was used for our drivetrain. So if I go into our constants.java, I've already got a constant for the arm motor. Um, so I can go type in here constants dot arm motor. I was hoping actually that uh, it was going to pull it up. So it's not going to know what this is. So again, we'll hover over it, quick fix, and port constants. And now we're in the clear there. All right, so if we wanted to, um, in our periodic function here, we can say smart dashboard dot put uh, number, and we'll call this arm speed. And we could get, we could do arm motor dot get. And what this is going to do is get the speed of the arm motor. This red squiggly line pops up because we need to import it. All right. So control S so that it uh, finds that out. And now we need to create some methods uh, for other commands to use for the subsystem. And so for our arm, we really only need the arm to go up, down, or stop. So I'm just going to quickly make some methods here. We can say public void arm up. And we could just say uh, arm motor that set and we'll just move it up at half speed. And then we could do the same thing here, public void arm down. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, and we'll set the arm motor to a negative speed. And then of course, public void arm stop and arm motor dot set zero. All right, so we now have three different methods. Uh, we want to create a default command for this arm, but we don't have any commands made yet. So uh, we come over to our commands folder and we right click on it, create a new class slash command. We'll type in command because this is now when we want the command, we want the new type and I'll call this an arm up command. All right. And so we want to define, or we want to be able to use our ARM subsystem in here. Um, and when we say here public class ARM, that is now the variable type. So, uh, you know, the double or integer or string, if we want to create, or if we want to reference the ARM subsystem, we would just refer to it as an ARM. So I can say ARM M underscore ARM. All right. It's going to need to be imported. And then in here, we'll need to pass it the arm. So I'll call this param arm just to keep things clear that that is the parameter that's being passed here. And we would say m arm equals param arm. And we need to use the add requirements and we want to use m arm. Uh, because this command requires the ARM subsystem. Um, also, I'm hitting tab to autocomplete some of these things. I haven't vocalized that yet, but when you're starting to type something, like in this case, I did add requirements, and you have that box that pops up. If you hit, hit tab, it completes it and fills in some of the things then for you to uh, fill out. So um, it might be a little annoying at first, but it does get uh, end up being very useful. All right. Um, and the way that we have our arm system set up here, we are setting the motor speed directly. We're not ever changing what that motor speed is. So we can go into uh, initialize and we can just use the mArm dot 
arm up uh, method here. And then uh, everything else here, we could leave it as is. Nothing needs to happen in the execute um, because the motor speed is already going to be set to the 0 0.5. Um, same with uh, and there's nothing we need to worry about that with that. And we'll let this just run until the button is, you know, released or something like that. Well, we'll need to do the same thing for arm. Whoops, I need to make a new command, arm down. And we'll make a new command, arm stop. Whoops, I need to do command new arm stop. So go ahead and pause and kind of get caught up if you haven't already. Okay, and so yeah, we need to use mArm again here, and we'll import. And we'll, we need to pass the subsystem here. Whoops, I want to do param arm. And in initialize, we're going to say arm, uh, whoops, mArm dot arm stop. And we'll do the same thing for arm down. Okay, and if we go back to our arm.java, we can now come in here and set a default command and do arm. We need to say new arm stop this. And we'll need to import that command. I don't know, maybe I need to do this dot. Oh, you know what, hang on, I'm going to try this again. Set default command. Oh, it doesn't like that. Does it give me a hint? Sometimes if you understand it, cannot instantiate the type command. Interesting. I don't know what I'm doing wrong. Let's look at our robot container and see. Let's see, set default command. Yeah, that all looks right here. I guess we could. Oh, you know what? Maybe we need to um, add in our robot container here, add public static final uh, arm m arm equals new arm. So we are now declaring it, importing it, in here. Nope. Well, we will ignore that for now. That's fine. Because we can always come in here and do mArm.set default command new arm stop. Arm. And import arm stop. Okay. And what's it complaining about? Oh imported an extra thing by accident. Okay, so in robot container, the last things that we need to do are now configure a button to make the arm go up and down. So we've declared our subsystem here, so we instantiated it. Uh, we set a default command for the arm so that the arm by default stops and goes uh, is set to zero. 
And so now we can say uh, joystick button, and we can say um, lift equals new joystick button and joystick three. And I'm going to copy this. Oh, I misspelled joystick button though. How embarrassing. And we'll say down and we'll make map this to four. So now we have these two buttons, lift and down, and we can do what uh, a couple of different things. So we could say lift and we can do while held, uh, new arm up. And so uh, we'll have to import this command. And we can also do the same thing for arm down, except we'll have to import. Oh, um, and we actually want to change this to down dot, uh, dot while held. So now, um, when button three is held, the arm uh, motor should go to positive 0.5. And while the button four is held, the arm button or arm motor speed should go to negative 0.5. So let's go ahead and simulate this. And I'm going to close out some of our other things that we don't need anymore. So we've got the arm speed in our smart dashboard here. Um, hopefully you can see in, right there. And let's go to teleop. And we can also even bring up our arm here so that we can see which command is being run. So by default, the arm stop command is being run. I'm going to hit C on my keyboard, which is button three. In case you don't remember, if you can't figure out how or what button is what or if you want to use a different button um, you can do the keyboard settings and in the buttons down here um, it might be a little tough to see in the screen but z x c and v are buttons one two three and four you can hit the plus sign to add more buttons etc um, but i'm in tele operated i'm going to hit c it is now doing arm up and the arm speed is 0 0.5 and when I release it, it goes to zero because now the arm stop command is being run. And if I do V, it does arm down um, and we get a speed of minus 0 0.5. I'm actually surprised to see the current command is being listed as arm stop. I don't know what is the deal with that. Um, interesting. Let's go take a look. While held, arm down. And if we go into here, this is doing arm down. And it's not stopping there. Arm stop. Let's initialize arm stop. Well, that's a little confusing. I'm not sure what happened there. Let's try that again. I can see arm up makes it go to 0 0.5 and 0. Arm down for some reason sets it to minus 0.5 and leaves it there regardless of what the command is. Let's take a look at our arm subsystem. Arm down, arm stop, public void arm down, arm motor is set to minus 0.5. Arm motor is set to zero and arm stop. Well, I'm legitimately confused as to what the deal is there. Oh, you know what it is? We didn't add that requirements here. So because arm down, uh, that command doesn't uh, have the add requirements, it doesn't know to interrupt the arm stop. So if we add requirements, 
and do M arm here. And let's make sure stop and up both have it. Both of them have all the add requirements. Now let's try it. <coughs> oh, the simulation is still running. Um, so you see I've got the stop sign up here. That's why the build failed. So if you run into a situation where it's failing, you might want to make sure that your simulation is no longer running. All right, go into teleoperated, and now arm down. We see arm down up here and minus 0.5, and I release it, and it goes back to zero. So now it's functioning the way we would expect. Really shows the importance of that add requirements. It would be very easy to miss that. The robot would misbehave, and we'd be looking at the code having no idea why. So that is a lot of information to absorb. Um, it very well may take a time or two of watching this for it to make sense. Please show up to the office hours, ask questions, um, give it a try of adding your an, an ARM command and subsystem, um, maybe make up your own thing if you want. Um, like I was mentioning before, uh, so for instance with this drivetrain, this differential drive, maybe you want to know more about different things because there's other things you could do besides arcade drive. So. If you go to um, the WPILib Java API docs, like I mentioned, and do a search for differential drive, you'll see that um, there's information in here um, for different types of drivetrains uh, that you could do, and there's different methods in here. Um, and so you can see that there's arcade drive, and you can do arcade drive in a couple of different ways. Um, there's also tank drive. Um, and some other information of what you could do with it. Um, all of this is more advanced than you really need to worry about right now, but if you want to go and learn some of that extra information, you're certainly free to. Um, but I think you'd be doing great just to kind of get some comfort in what is a subsystem, what is a command, how do you make them all work together. So that is going to be it for today. Um, and I hope that this wasn't too much, but I'd love any feedback. Tell me what I can do to help make things more clear or if we need to do some things in between, etc. So thank you.